Hey guys, Chris here. Thanks for taking time to watch this video. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to subscribe to our channel so you get all of our latest videos. Today I'm going to talk to you about the second most important part of our camper. The first, of course, you may be wondering, but is coffee. Always got to have coffee. So that narrows it down to the second most important system in our camper, and that is our power system. I'm going to bore some of you because you already have experience around campers and uh, the different power systems, but Really quickly, I want to give an overview, and then I'm going to talk about our specific system. It's a very unique system that we have set up, and then how we're going to modify it in the next week or so to make it what we need it to be moving forward. Um, like all things, we've learned a lot on the road, and we're going to share what we've learned with you and share the changes that we're going to make. So I'll talk about that uh, in the later part of this video, and then we'll come back and we'll actually do a video when we're doing the install and show you how we do it. If you're just watching, letting you know, I don't know everything. If you've been watching for a while, you already know I don't know everything. So everything that I've, I'm showing you today, everything I'm talking about, I literally learned in the last three years, two and a half years on the road, plus another year or so of planning and trying things out. We left on the road. We had never driven our camper more than 20 miles twice to camp in my parents' driveway when we were working as, as foster parents. So... Um, that was the extent of our knowledge. We've learned a lot. So if you're watching this and you're like, I really don't know if this is for me or how to do this, hopefully you'll see that um, I break a lot of things and I figure out how to fix them and things break on their own and we have to fix them. So we've learned a lot through trial and error. Power system for us, aside from obviously as a human being, you need food and water and water is most important. So we do focus on our water system. Uh, the second would, would be power. We both work from the road. We have our laptops constantly being used. We have various other things. We're charging our cameras, our video cameras, um, and then of course your daily consumption. If you're not using power like we would be using power, some of this might seem overkill for you, but I'll let you know that this is the basics that I would recommend anybody who's looking to set out more than just weekend camping. If you're gonna be on the road for any amount of time, there's some things that you're gonna to wanna to do that we're going to recommend that are just kind of the basics. For those of you who aren't familiar with the RV power system, you have two types of power. The first is what we call shore power, um, and that is your 110 electricity, just like the things that you use back home. So when you're plugging in your uh, coffee maker or your whatever into the wall, uh, your lamp, that's 110. You have the ability to do that in a camper if you are plugged in to what's called shore power, and that's the power that comes cable that comes out of the camper and you run it in and you plug it in somewhere. Typically that's 30 amp or 50 amp, although you're also able to use 20 amp, which is the regular um, electric cord to some degree for some appliances inside your camper. You can adapt and do that. Um, however, most are going to be 30 amp or 50 amp. If you have a big camper, it's likely to be 50. Our truck camper and most of the campers that are smaller that we've come across are 30 amp. Um, and so that's your shore power. When you're plugged in, you can run your camper just like you're running your home. You can plug anything in. It doesn't matter really the voltage draw on it or the wattage draw. You can run your microwave. You can do your hair, ladies. You can throw the TV on, which isn't a big power consumer, but you can do pretty much anything in your camper that you could do at home in terms of power use. DC uh, electric power, on the other hand, is limited by the size of your batteries and the draw of uh, energy from your appliances and the various things that you're using. So that depends on how you've got your battery or batteries set up and how much energy they can store, how well you're charging them, how well they're maintained. There's a ton of variables in that and that's why that would be a whole separate video to go into about our specific setup and some of the things that we've noticed. But in general, and this, this sounds crazy, but if you're just getting started, you may not understand that you can't plug certain things into appliances when you're boondocking somewhere in a Walmart parking lot or out in the middle of beautiful Sedona. Um, that's because you're running off of your battery power and it's wired differently in some cases than your shore power. So one of the things we noticed, just a little spoiler alert preview, is that um, there is a way so that all of your electrical appliances can plug into the same outlets and whether you're running from shore power, 
with 110 or whether you're running DC power off your batteries, you can use the outlets the same. Uh, we didn't know about that for two years of our journey. Um, thanks to Scott, our awesome friend Scott, um, who we camped with in Baja for quite some time, we learned that there's this really cool battery transfer switch or uh, power transfer switch that detects where the energy is coming in, whether it's shore power or DC, and then all your appliances run the same. Get into that later. So if you stuck through this first part, that was just a very basic overview of the power systems for anyone considering life on the road. A lot of the places that you go camping, if you're camping in a campground, you're going to be able to plug into shore power. Sometimes state and national parks have campgrounds where you can plug in. But if you're like us, boondocking is what we, we love, boondocking. Um, and so we, one, it saves us a bunch of money, and two, you're usually in beautiful places. So if you're doing that, you've got to have a basic understanding of your power system. And that's why it's so important for us right now to spend some time revisiting what worked for us and what didn't work for us. So a basic overview of our existing power system. We bought a out-of-the-box Renogy startup solar kit. It was awesome. We love Renogy. This is a plug for Renogy. We affiliate for them. We actually are including the link in the description below where you can get 10% off your purchase through uh, our affiliate link. Not going to hide the fact that we absolutely love Renogy. Very much plug and play, and that's what we needed because we didn't know what we were doing. I mentioned before I screw things up big time. I needed something I couldn't really screw up. And Renogy makes these literal plug and play um, components for the solar system. So we bought one of their out of the box starter kits that included two panels that were 100 watts each. It included a um, charger, control charger, that was, I'm gonna screw this up, PMW, PWM. Um, it wasn't the best charger. And it included some basic wiring stuff. So we had to figure out how to connect everything in the camper to the batteries. But once we did that, we found out we had a pretty good setup from a solar standpoint. There's another component to consider, and that is an inverter. Your inverter, long story short, takes your battery power, DC power, and converts it into 110 so that you can use your 110 appliances like a computer charger, hair dryer, etc. With that, you are limited to the size of your batteries and the size of your inverter. So we started out with a 600 watt Xantrex inverter. Love Xantrex, not affiliates for them, um, but Xantrex has a great product. We started with 600 watts because a couple people we talked to said, yeah, it's overkill to go any bigger because the more wattage you want in your inverter, the more batteries you have to have and the, the more storage capacity. So we were first set it starting out. We didn't really know what we were doing. Didn't know how long we were going to be on the road. We thought we were going from Alaska to Argentina, but we didn't know how long it was going to take. So we said, let's do this starter kit and see how it works. And so with that, the last component is your batteries. And we had your standard deep cycle flooded um, whatever batteries. Your Their interstate, um, I forgot what they're called. Don't hold that against me. So anyway, we had the, the standard deep cycle batteries for any RV. Nothing fancy at the time, AGM, um, and this would have been in 2017, 2018 is when we left early in the year. So AGM was around, but they were pricey, and lithium ion was still in that question mark stage of, one, it was super pricey, and two, was it actually going to pay off, or were you just throwing your money at something that might or might not work? So we went with the standard batteries, um, and they've worked great for us. When I did all the calculations on them, uh, it was about an 80 amp hour battery. And we had two of those. And so with that, we had a pretty good setup between the two batteries that we hooked up together in parallel so that we could combine the storage capacity of the batteries. We had our inverter, the 600 watt inverter connected directly to that. So we could pull up to 600 watts of, of our appliances, our computer chargers, camera chargers, um, other devices that we were using our television and then we also had our solar system which of course was used to charge our batteries to then allow us to draw energy from that so those are your three components with the power system that are your essentials at this point in time in the year 2020 nobody should go camping for any amount of time without solar power 
It is ridiculously cheap, ridiculously efficient, um, mostly convenient. There are some camper setups where it might not be convenient to have a big mounted, permanently mounted solar panel, but they've got these really great detachable ones, fold up ones, all kinds of options. There's no reason why you shouldn't go without a power system, a uh, solar system. Of course, we recommend Renogy, and they've got a variety of different products that will meet your needs 100%. If you have any questions, send us an email or comment or message. Again, we're not hiding the fact that we love Renogy, but there are tons of op options out there. We came across Renogy through lots of reviews. This was in 2017. Lindsay is, is amazing with finding information online, reviews, forums. And what we found for the average RVer with the average budget, um, Renogy was perfect. And they've, they've got, they've, it's been great. Customer service, even in Alaska, we had an issue all the way in Prudhoe Bay where we actually had cell phone service where when we were in Dead Horse, we were able to call and speak to somebody. They picked up the phone, they walked us through everything. Turns out it wasn't a problem, but they were able to explain it on the phone right there while we were at the literal top of the world. So that's pretty awesome. So back to our setup. Some of the things that we noticed is that we ended up off-road far more often than we thought. So our batteries, the standard deep cell, uh, standard deep cycle RV batteries are not meant for bouncing around. Um, they have water in them. They have a lid on that that can leak water. So when you're bouncing around, the water that's supposed to maintain the battery can be forced out of the battery, in which case the battery loses efficiency and ultimately will die. We think we have um, basically put a stranglehold on our batteries because of the time that we spent going off-road in Baja. So one of the things we need to do is look into battery backup. Instead of buying the same batteries at this point in time, AGM batteries are not too far off the price point of the standard deep cycle, a little bit more expensive, but they're a whole lot more durable. They say that you can mount them in any direction, like you can mount them sideways. Um, we're gonna mount ours regular upright, but they can be shaken like you don't wanna shake the baby. You can take them off road and bounce around and all things being equal, uh, they should be fine. I wouldn't submerge them in water or do anything crazy like that. But we are going to upgrade our standard deep cycle batteries to AGM deep cycle batteries. We've got the 100 amp hour Renogy batteries that we will hook up together in parallel, which brings me to our second point. One of the things that we don't like about our camper setup is that Lance in this particular model and probably most models didn't anticipate that people would want to have two batteries and have a larger battery bank for more energy for their setup. So in that sense, there was only one compartment that could fit one group 27 or 29 battery, and that's what we had to go with. So we have one battery in our camper in that compartment, and then we actually mounted another battery because of our awesome flatbed setup. We we're able to customize things like having an extra battery that was outside of the camper. We have it about four feet away, so it's a nice short run, but it is separated from the other battery. We run two wires, uh, 4AWG, nice and thick and safe and secure. We run that between the two batteries, so we hook them up in parallel. So right now we've got our two 80 amp hour batteries in parallel for 160 total amp hours. Again, not getting into details, should never go below 50%. So basically we always are aiming for having at least 80 amp hours with those batteries. But we don't like the fact that they're separated. We don't like the fact that we have to do a long run of four feet or so between the two. And it's also creating this situation where we don't have energy flow that's really clean. We've got some appliances like our inverters connected to the battery in our truck. Then we have everything else connected to the one in the camper. So we don't have this clean flow of energy. And we want to do a system in our rig where everything comes in to the batteries that are hooked together right there, nice and neat and everything flows out with one um, wire, and then it goes off in its various ways so that we have only one connection on each post instead of the crazy bird's nest that we have right now or crow's nest or whatever you call it of wires that are going all over the place. Um, again, we didn't know what we were doing. We just went with what was set up, and this is a major modification for us. So we've got an idea of how we're gonna put these two batteries next to each other, these two AGM batteries next to each other, 
We're going to hook them up in parallel. We're going to secure them. They're going to be on our truck, which brings the issue if we take the camper off the truck or whenever we have to do that, we will end up having to take the batteries off the truck and have them associated with the camper. We got an idea about how to handle that, but the idea that we were looking for is that there's no way to fit two batteries in the camper, so we have to fit these two batteries on the truck, and now we'll have them both close together. We're also going to upgrade our solar system in the sense that we purchased a third 100 watt panel, so we'll have 300 watts of solar charging capability, but we're switching out our PWM controller for a much more efficient MPPT controller. Acronyms don't make sense unless you've been shopping around and you're like, what's the difference between the two? The big difference is the out of the box PWM charger that we have is very inefficient. It's designed for people who are just doing basic applications. So if you're looking to save money and you're not doing a lot of boondocking, um, they're gonna do fantastic. Ours has done fine. But for us, we're gonna be using a lot of power and we're gonna wanna recharge our batteries and keep them maintained in a quick fashion we're gonna go with our MPPT controller. It does cost us a little extra to do that, but it's gonna to be totally worth having that. In terms of upgrades, we've also decided that we're gonna go with a 1000 watt inverter. We're switching from Xantrex to Renogy, so we're gonna have a fully, um, a full Renogy power system inside our camper. And with that 1000 watts, it's still not crazy amount, like the bigger, you get the more batteries you have to have. So if you have a class A, you might be laughing at me right now and probably shouldn't be watching this video. Um, even some larger class C's, but for the most part, most um, campers, especially truck campers, aren't gonna have more than two batteries for your camper. Definitely have seen class A's and class C's that have two, three, four, five big monster batteries all hooked up together, in which case you can go with a much larger inverter. But for us, a thousand watts should be plenty. Um, we were having trouble with our 600 watts when we were trying to work. We'd have to dance around each other of whose computer could be plugged in when and what else could be charging and what could we could we be running um, this or that or whatever. So because um, we we have our drone, we've got our handy cam, we've got our GoPro. So we had all of this nightmare for us of trying to remember when to plug this in and unplug that. And then we had to charge everything before it got dark because we didn't trust our batteries to be able to last through the night at the power consumption we were using. So for us, a larger inverter, better, better batteries with better capacity, and now this better controller with more efficiency. It's like 97, 99% efficient in taking the energy that's coming in and dishing it out to the batteries. So we should be able to charge our batteries, batteries quickly they should stay charged longer, have more battery capacity for us to be able to use more appliances when it comes to storage and use of power inside the camper. In a nutshell, we're changing everything about our power system, except for the solar panels. We love our three 100 watt solar panels, although the last one that we purchased we noticed was significantly smaller than the first two that we have. So I, I know the way that technology changes over time, things get better, smaller, faster, more efficient, less expensive. So you may want to take a look at that and say, is it worth doing now? Or should I wait until next year when lithium ion batteries are super cheap or when solar panels are, uh, you know, one foot by one foot for hundred Watts, we're going to be changing out everything, but our solar panels. So that'll include our inverter that we're going to go up from a 600 Watt to 1000 Watt Renogy inverter. We're changing our batteries out from the standard flooded deep cell, um, deep cycle RV batteries to the AGM, 100 amp hours each. Again, those are Renogy. And we're changing out our, our controller from the PWM to the MPPT controller, which will allow the entire system to hold more energy, to recharge and to discharge far more efficiently for the battery or for the energy consumption that we need. The last thing that we're going to do is two part. The first is to clean up all the wiring. As I mentioned, we've got things that are going all over the place in terms of connecting to battery terminals. We're gonna clean that all up, streamline it because we're gonna place the two batteries together. We can now dictate the flow of energy instead of having one thing going out of this battery and another thing going out of that battery just because of the proximity of the, 
the devices that we were plugging into the battery, now we're going to be able to have one wire go out and then split off and go to our inverter and split off and go to our house power, split off and go wherever we need to go, like our WeBoost that we have that, that wires in separately. We'll be able to do all of that with the setup that we're going to do. So cleaning that up is super important. And the other reason is we need to know our battery state of charge constantly. Um, that, that was something for us, even in full sun in Baja, there were days where we couldn't tell what our battery charge was. The two batteries were hooked up in parallel and they should be reading the same, but there was negligible loss. So I would have to go out with our voltmeter uh, and I would check the battery from time to time and be like, whoa, it's full sun. Both of our computers are plugged in this, that, and the other. And we're drawing down to 12.8 uh, volts. And even that wasn't a true state of uh, condition for our batteries. So we're going to invest in, uh, with streamlining the wiring, we're going to put a shunt between the battery and all the draws that we're using. And we're going to have a battery monitor that's going to tell us things like our amperage in and out, our voltage, um, the draw that we're using different appliances. So we'll have a real-time, 100% accurate understanding of our energy consumption or our recharge. So I don't know how long this video is actually going to turn out. And again, I will be doing the video when we're installing this. We're starting to get all of our parts in. It's been fun because we worked our butts off to save. We should have done this two months ago, just buying and getting the, the rig outfit uh, when we got back to Florida. But right now we've been able to work and save up the money to buy this stuff. And you know how spending is. It's awesome to spend. So I had a little budget set aside and we have bought all the things that I'm talking about plus some additional wiring and things that I'll show you in the next video about our power system. Probably gonna be another week or two before we actually get to doing the project. Um, but all of how to is gonna be involved in that video. This is just to give you an idea if you're planning your RV camper, um, your setup, even in a sailboat, this stuff is applicable. If you're planning your power system or you're thinking about upgrading or you're wondering what we think about our system or what we would change or what we would tell you is a good idea th th that's what this video is for so hopefully you got that out of here hopefully you understand a little bit more about your power system if you have any questions please reach out i personally answer every email almost every comment unless you leave nasty comments like chris you don't know what the heck you're doing in which case i volunteer i don't know what i'm doing sometimes but for the most part, um, I am a jack of all trades and I'm learning more about the life that we love on the road. So hopefully you understand the things that we love about our system and the things that we're going to change. Again, reach out if you have any questions. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. We'd love to keep you updated on our journey. Right now we're getting ready to gear up to go out on the next leg of our adventure, which we hope will be a continuous leg instead of these times where we've had to take breaks in between but if you do have a positive comment or a question that we could answer, honestly, uh, go ahead and leave that down below. We'll be leaving some resources in the description that you can see how we built our truck camper and, of course, our link to Renogy so you can get a discount on the awesome products that we do 100% use, 100% endorse on our own. Renogy didn't come to us. We went to them and said, hey, your stuff's awesome. Can we hook other people up with it? And they said, absolutely. So make sure to check out that link. And again, we will check in with you later.